the small SIMAT lathe is now set up with a uh, variable speed motor from uh, a treadmill and is uh, ready to go. Just uh, a few points though, a few pointers. Uh, the first thing, I've um, been trying to think about safety. One of the problems when you retrofit something is whether you're going to have a no volt release switch. Basically what that means is if the power goes out, and that could happen, and then comes on again, if you just have a simple on-off switch like a, a light switch or something that some people have, what will happen is your motor will be live and will suddenly come on as the power resets or comes on again. So. Uh, really, you need a no volt release switch in all modern power tools, uh, pillar drills, etc. Feature one. Uh, this, I've just checked it out, uh, provides the functionality of a no volt release switch. That's the controller. Inside this box here, I've been able to put all the um, electronics, the speed controller, uh, salvage from the treadmill. Um, now, rather than having the wires connected permanently, there's an earth terminal there, and then the positive and negative outputs are on there. I've reused the little label, which does, but it's difficult to read, danger, it says 200 volts DC. So the output on those uh, two terminals there is high. It may be DC, not to assume it's like 12 volts DC, I have fairly safe, it's 200 volts or, or more DC, therefore not a safe thing. I didn't have any shrouded plugs. Uh, so if you are buying plugs and connectors, you can get specific high voltage plugs which are shrouded so that as you plug them in, um, you, you don't get any exposed metal, as there is there to catch your fingers. Uh, earth terminal, I've not got the uh, lathe itself grounded, so it might be useful to have a ground from there to the uh, motor. Uh, the other thing is what about a um, emergency stop? Um, the, what, the, it would be possible to attach to the front of this the uh, string that comes with the treadmill insert that emergency stop. Uh, but that relies upon you using it properly. It would be possible to insert the device cut the string, not attach the string to yourself, it's not there. What I've done is I've left this loose. Initially I left it loose because I thought I might want to move it, use it somewhere else. So that's a, a device which gives you a variable, not, uh, well, it gives you variable output on the DC output uh, from the mains input. <coughs> However, with these plugs in here, if anything does go wrong that's catastrophically wrong, then upsetting the table will cause this to just slide and it will hopefully release the plugs from there. So the plugs will fall out. Um, and apart from that, you know, uh, it, that's a bit safer, a little bit safer. Uh, if you had an e-stop button, how are you going to get to the e-stop button if something goes wrong? Uh, that's always the problem. Now, uh, the other thing is there's a lot of vibration because of the belt and the way the belt is being attached. I'm not going to run it just now. You might see me trying to go something. Because it's an old and it's a warm belt, and so I'm going to have to think about what I do about the belt drive uh, to avoid to do something about the vibration. Uh, so it's belt-induced vibration. Uh, now, the other thing is, in order to get it to turn the right way, I put the red one into the black terminal, the black into the red, and it turns the right way. And when I get the um, tachometer, I'll be able to find out what speed it goes at. Now, the reason I've left this pulley on is because I can't get it off in the flywheel. But my understanding is that this uh, heavy flywheel is on a threaded thing onto the end. And what I've realized is that in uh, reversing the direction of this, I'm potentially unscrewing the flywheel. <clears throat> so the danger, <coughs> excuse me, is 
that at some point there'll be enough load on the pulley here or you might jam a tool into here and cause lots of load that uh, the motor will unscrew itself from the inside of this that's the danger and then what you've got is a high speed very fast spinning very heavy weight flying around uh, the workshop as it spins off the end I've tried to remove it it is stuck fast on there so for my purposes and I'm doing this uh, in full knowledge this really really does appear to be quite fast up because I wanted to take it off to use a different pulley my options are to groove this pulley up out to suit the belt uh, that's a different thing uh, and so um, I'm aware of that but the other thing is the way it's tensioned is such that uh, I can break this and that is operating as a clutch uh, we'll have to see how you get the right sort of combination between enough friction to turn this and drive that at the right um, with the right force for turning uh, but also so that that acts as a as a clutch so that's something to look at an alternative would be just to drill down through here insert a grub screw insert a pin inserting something to pin it onto the shaft but at the moment I don't feel that's necessary and that's the risk I'm taking is that it will unscrew because I can't get it unscrewed uh, from that shaft so there's the things reverse the direction of that motor and you risk unscrewing it the alternative for me would have been to turn the motor around so it's facing this way that would have left the motor in the wrong position for how I wanted it uh, it is possible to insert a counter shaft uh, and the counter shaft would be very useful to reduce the speed of the motor and increase uh, its, uh, its force and with a counter shaft you could have the motor pointing the other way and the counter shaft coming back again uh, and I have looked at counter shafts online they seem to be going for you know more money than I felt it was worth paying given uh, the setup and the usage this is going to get okay I hope that's of use and you will see it going when I get the tachometer